kind of started a tradition a couple years ago that we kind of review what was happened this past year, in case you haven't gotten out there to see everything. Then we're going to talk about what's underway, what's under construction right now, and then we're going to talk about what's coming up in the next year, things that we've asked the board to put in the budget, which should be approved over the next uh, two months. I'm also going to talk about some of our special events. We have really ramped up on special events, and we've uh, done that last year, and we've done it this year. So a little bit about this past year. We had one of the busiest summers ever. Ever. Navy days. Who can forget that? 40,000 people trying to fit their way into San Pedro. Cars and stripes forever. We started the first year with 5,000 people. We had 17,000 people last year. And we ended that night with a fireworks show. We also had Taste of San Pedro, the first time to be held in the promenade. We had 20,000 people on the promenade for Taste of San Pedro. We also started our concert series. And so over about nine concerts, we had them every week, different bands down at the fountain. With fountain shows, we had about 6,000 visitors. And then one of our annual events, the Lobster Fest, brought another 40,000. With the opening of the Wilmington Waterfront Park this summer, we were really able to expand our events. So, for example, we always have the Happy Harbor Halloween, which has grown. You know, last year we had 2,500 kids and parents in San Pedro, but we did it the same day simultaneously in Wilmington, and we had another 2,500 people in Wilmington for our Halloween event. And then we kind of ended up the year with the Holiday Fountain Show. It's always the first Friday. Friday of December, so you can mark your calendar even for the coming holiday season, and we generally get about 500 to 700 people. One of our huge events in Wilmington is when we bring in the snow, truckloads of snow. We had 2,000 kids out there playing in the snow. And then we topped off the year with our holiday boat parade. So what else was big for this past year? The opening of the Wilmington Waterfront Park on June 4th. The mayor came. There were over 3,000 people that came to that opening. And to be honest, it was the first time I actually walked through the park myself. And I, it knocked my socks off. I was floored. It's hard to express the feeling of how spectacular that is, and when you go by that park in the evening, and that how well it is used every night. If you haven't been there, this is a before and after of, of the Wilmington Waterfront Park. It's 30 acres, and there's a promenade, and there's pedestrian and bicycle connection. It's got a plaza area. There's an amphitheater. There's playgrounds. There's two water fountains for kids. There's four large grass fields, and as you know, we're not allowed to build permanent in athletic facilities but there are six acres of artificial turf there and if the kids happen to go out and play soccer well good for them the Wilmington Waterfront Park is actually been winning awards right and left. And probably the most exciting thing for our staff is the fact that next month in April, we made the cover of Landscape Architecture magazine, which not everybody reads, but it's big. <laughs> The park has been treated very well. We have three full-time bike patrols that monitor the park, as well as the promenade, and as well as 22nd Street Park. We also have three port police that are on those Segway things. Of course, we've got our, our typical port police patrols in the car. Harry Bridges Boulevard. It actually was completed March 29th. Is that today? That's today. It's done. Today. You know? Yay! We use the federal government's money for this. 22 million we got from the federal government to do that project. The other thing, if you haven't driven down by the Cabrillo Marina, the new marina, oh my God, the landscaping. Ah, oh, it just looks fabulous. It's completed. We've selected our operator. One of the things I want to point out is we highlighted them yellow. You'll see these like there's nothing there when you go down there. It's beautiful. These are development opportunities. Future restaurants, marina-related shops could go in there. So that there's about 90,000 square foot of space for development. So we found out last week that the Cabrillo Way Marina won an award. All of our projects seem to be winning awards. One of the things about the Cabrillo Marina is we added another three quarters of a mile of the promenade. That's the promenade, the John Papadakis promenade. There's another three quarters of a mile of the, pro the promenade open. And if you walk along, you notice there's a lot of stuff 
in the promenade in different areas, quotes, things. In the marina, we have sailing A to Z. And so the entire alphabet is there. And with each letter, there is a nautical term. So for example, G, gimbal, a fixture that allows an object to swivel and remain level in rough seas. K is keel, the center timber at the bottom of a boat's hull, which attaches to the framing members. The other thing that has opened this past year is our Ship in a Bottle by Mark Dion. And we actually had the unveiling early in the year, February 2011. And unfortunately, in October, the Ship in the Bottle was vandalized. The piece of artwork cost us $200,000. The repair to the piece of artwork is going to cost $150,000. And so we're kind of struggling among the management team, like, oh, what do we do? You know, we're not going to be spending this money, you know, every month somebody goes out there and vandalizes it. And I have to tell you, it was a heartbreak for a lot of us who just thought this thing was fabulous. It's something that we are, are dealing with, the vandalism issue. And then a big thing for the Maritime Museum, we painted it. It was our own port employees that painted it. It got a new set of clothes for its 75th birthday, and it was painted in the original colors. So we went back to the historic colors. So let's talk a little bit about what's underway out there, what's under construction now. If you've been down by the SP slip or down by Utro's, you see a lot of stuff going on there, and you can see some of the work going on. This is a project that we call it the Southern Pacific Slip, or we call it the Ghost Fish. It is actually improvement to parking. There is going to be a plaza there. There is going to be seating there. So you can see some of the improvements going on right now and then come September some night we're gonna light the fish I know I talked about it last year I said we're gonna construct it this year it is under construction and sometime in September we will light it Carl Chang is reaching out and trying to get memorabilia from San Pedro fishing families that he will then replicate and he'll cast it and he will put it in the bottom part of the fish and I think I mentioned this last year too is that the fish has an eye. When you walk around it, the eye will follow you. Harold Green is doing all the benches around there. We held the groundbreaking for the downtown harbor on March 15th. John was our master of ceremonies, but the mayor came down. This is huge for us. You know, the community asked for, we want downtown first, and we just pushed and pushed till we could get this project underway. It is the area that is in between the fire station and the Maritime Museum will all become water. And you know when you're down there standing in that area, it's amazing how large that water basin is going to be. So when is it going to be done? Here's our goal. In August 2014, the tall ships are coming back to San Pedro. They're going to come down that main channel, and they are coming right into that new harbor. I'm going to make sure that it's ready. So it's not only the harbor, but it's a lot of landside improvements around there. When we're done, the area around the harbor will be able to accommodate 5,000 people if there was an, an event there. And we're going to go out to advertise for construction contracts to construct all of the boardwalk and stuff around the harbor, the promenade around the harbor this summer. There's another element of the downtown harbor, and that is another piece of artwork that the Arts Committee selected for the downtown harbor. You'll go down there when it's finished, and you'll see this little shack, and you'll wonder, gee, what is that? And then you'll walk up, and you'll look through the windows, and what you'll see is what a ship channel looked like about 100 years ago. And Mark Dion, the world-renowned artist is known for building structures that people look into and they see and it'll look like you know somebody just got up and walked away you know from their desk and all of the stuff will be there this is actually a shot inside one of the ship channelers that was on Beacon Street it'll give you an idea of what but you'll see the artist actually collects the period pieces to put in there, and so it's going to be a great thing. It's not open to walk into, it'll be something that you look into. Another thing coming up is Crafted. 
Warehouses 9 and 10, we went through a competitive bidding process for choosing a developer. Wayne Blank of Bergamont Station was selected, and he has come up with a concept for, we call it crafted at the Port of Los Angeles. And what we love about the concept is he's not really changing the character of the warehouses. He's going to paint them. He's going to spruce up the area. It's going to be all landscaped. He's going to have a plaza area, you know, in between them. It's going to be a public crafts marketplace. And it is going to be for juried craft. It's not flea market stuff, swap meat stuff. This is quality stuff. I am wearing a piece of jewelry from one of the crafted artists. And you can actually go on the crafted website and look at some of the artwork, the artists that they've already selected. There was a great article in the LA Times. The website is fun to just read. We started construction. We actually issued a notice to our contractor in February to demolish the Westways tanks. You'll probably start seeing some activity in May. This was probably the only time in the city's histories where the contractors competed paying us for the right to demolish the tanks. They paid us. So we selected a bid of minus $700,000. That means they pay us $700,000 for the right to demolish that facility. That is a first. And you know why? Scrap, the salvage value. You know, when I heard that, I was like, hey, there must be something there. So they're going to demolish everything except for the little building there, an old building there, and they're going to leave, leave that building. So that is really going to change the visual aspect of the waterfront. Another thing I want to tell you that's going on is Catalina Express. The China shipping project that is under construction required Catalina Express to move. And what's actually happened is they are going to move their operations into the pavilion building, which is up here. There's a building that's going to be demolished. There's going to be some new floats there. And they're actually going to be using the area where the Lane Victory was. That was part of our waterfront plan. And in our waterfront plan, the Lane Victory was going to go into the North Harbor cut, which we've eliminated so that we can accommodate the Iowa. So we have to find another place for the Lane Victory. Some of you may have seen it. We have relocated it temporarily. It's out here at, at birth 46. And then we're going to move it for maybe a long temporary period right here at birth 49 to 50. Last week I was in Washington. On the way back, I decided to divert to San Francisco on the way back to LA because I wanted to see what the USS Iowa looked like. I'll tell you a little bit about what we saw. When you move in, you can see that they've been set up to um, bring visitors on. And you know, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest. The thing that I worried about the most was that it was going to come into the harbor and it was going to look rusty and sit there and not be attractive. And I don't worry about that anymore. They're going to paint the entire ship. And so it'll be painted before it comes down here. And that will make a huge improvement in terms of the overall visual effect um, of the ship. So when I, I was standing here in the parking lot looking up, and you can't tell from this picture, but there were people. I'm like, look at all those people up there. There are about 40 people up there working on the ship. So there's a lot of stuff going on. One of the things that they knew, you know, the Pacific Battleship Center knew, was that the deck was in bad condition, the wood deck, the teak deck. And when they you take up the teak, it's all rusty underneath. And so you can see areas where they're taking up the teak deck. They're going to sand all the deck, and they're going to put in a non-skid coating for people to walk on it. I was fairly impressed with the inside. It looked pretty good. OK. I was impressed with the galley. I saw all that stainless steel kitchen stuff, and I just fell in love. So giant mixers, you know. What they told me is that they will be the only Navy ship where the Navy will allow them to operate the galley. And so if we ever need to feed 5,000 people at a time, there's a kitchen that's going to be available in San Pedro. I wanted to see the area. They talk about having scouts come down and stay overnight. I want to see, where are you going to put these kids? Not in the box. That's where this, <laughs> the kids put their camping gear. But in these, this, these are the berthing areas for the sailors, the lockers. You can see the, the ship is not in bad condition on the inside. It looked pretty good. 
I have to tell you, I left there, and I think my comment was in the paper already. I thought, oh my God, these guys are going to pull it off. One of the things that's going on is a significant amount of improvements that we're doing to the parking lot. As a result of the construction over here, we lost 500 spaces of the parking lot um, that Cat Catalina Express had used. So a lot of their parking is going to push out over this way. We also are lost parking because of the downtown harbor cut temporarily. And so we've got some overflow parking from Maritime Museum, Ports of Call coming in this area. One of the things that we did is we, we're creating and upgrading the entrances into the parking lot. So we are also upgrading restrooms. There's a restroom building out there. We're improving that restroom building and just overall trying to improve the layout, the signage, and the whole parking situation there to accommodate the Iowa, but also the other users that use that parking lot. This summer, we'll have the bikeways put in. We are put, doing bike lanes and doing sharrows. And sharrows are what, if you've driven down downtown Long Beach, they have the sharrows. First time I went down there, I was like, oh my God, this is weird. You park here, the bike lane is here, it's, and then you have the car lane there. And so along Shoshone Way, we're gonna have sharrows, and along Cabrillo Way, we're gonna have bike lanes. Moving over to the Wilmington side, even though the park's in, the public art is not in yet. There is a sculpture that goes in called coastlines. It's these big rocks, and it's supposed to represent what the coastline originally was like in some areas along the coast here. And the other thing is what piece of public art is called the Wilmington Waves. This is lighting all the pedestrian bridges. There are three bridges over in the Wilmington Park. One is really an iconic cable-stayed bridge, and they will light, and they are set that when you walk along the bridge, you light the bridge. When nobody's walking along the bridge, it has a certain routine that it goes through. Okay, let's talk about what's projects that are in the planning. Okay, ports of call. That is our next big thing. That is what the port is going to be focusing on over the next year. And the strategy was build a critical mass. The strategy was not only have us continue to do the public infrastructure, get a lot of activity going on there, and bring in commercial development. So with crafted, with starting the downtown harbor, which shows the developer, we're moving forward with the major focal point next to Ports of Call. With the Iowa coming in, that was kind of icing on the cake. We came up with a strategy before we knew about the Iowa. Marymount College coming into downtown San Pedro, 1,000 kids, all hungry. There's critical mass of people going to be down at the waterfront. So we believe with everything that's going on, the events and the infrastructure that we're doing and the developments, that it is time this summer we are gonna go out and solicit for uh, the Ports of Call development. One of the great things about this development is we already have it entitled. The EIR is done. We entitled 300,000 square feet of development plus 75,000 square feet of meeting space. Not a convention center, but large meeting area space. If you go out there now, there's about 150,000 square feet. Next up, Sampson Way, another big project around in the area by Ports of Call. And let me show you how the project started and how it changed. This was the alternative that was adopted in the EIR. There was a retaining wall here, and in order to cross the street, you had to cross, get to the middle there, hang out, and then cross again. And it was like, you know, there were a lot of comments during the workshops. And, and one of the things we've railed against, and I, you know, the staff have heard it, I don't want the Shoreline Drive effect in Long Beach, that six lanes where you gotta walk across, you wanna keep it close, tight, comfortable, so you draw people across the street. So as a result of public input, this idea did not come from my staff, as fabulous as they are, this came through the workshops when Oh, why don't we make a T intersection? Oh, instead of these walls, why don't we terrace the property down, have grass, and it's almost like an amphitheater. And so this is what we're building, not what was in the EIR and was adopted. That will be one of the projects that's not in this year's budget. We'll begin looking at pro programming that for construction in future years. Okay, Plaza Park. 
support funded it, but we're not doing it. The groundbreaking is April 12th at 2.30. It's gonna be done by uh, the Recreation Parks Department. We gave them to the money. We've been doing a lot of coordination with them. The people that worked on Sampson Way also got involved in this project. It's gonna move forward. I wanna tell you about a few things we're not doing, and I wanna explain why we're not doing them. When we do our budget each year, we look at what our revenue is, and you know, we're not back to where we were in 2006 yet. I would love to do it. If I had unlimited money, I would be out there, I would do it all at once. We don't have the money to do it all at once. So we're being very strategic about what projects we're doing. We're saying, okay, is it a project that will bring new visitors to the waterfront? Is it a critical focal point? Will it, it will it catalyze something else? And so, and it may be a great thing, but we have to decide, you know, that has to come in a later phase. So the Ralph J. Scott Museum is one of them. It's a $10 million museum that is not um, funded. It was part of the downtown harbor. We were anxious to get the downtown harbor going. Um, we didn't have enough money to do to add the Ralph J. Scott in, so we took it out and we set it aside. It's a great project for, for grant money, you know, if we can go out and get, get grants for it, but it's not one that we have funded this year. The City Dock Marine Research Center, EIR, coming out in May. This is a project that moves the 11 universities and their research vessels from Fish Harbor over to the pier here. This, is, this EIR has been under development as part of the development of the EIR. The entire pier now is designated as historic, except for the Westway tanks, which are being demolished. You know, in the waterfront plan, the community wanted adaptive reuse of these warehouses, and so it was a perfect fit for the universe is going to move over there. And so that project will move forward, move forward with our money, but we are securing funds. And so stay tuned for some announcements on that project. It's also part of building critical mass. Developers will see, oh, that project's going forward. They're going to be the universities there. There are people that need to buy something to eat. They'll want to buy some, you know. It brings people to the waterfront. At one time I was checking when we had activity in there, we had like four to eight people working on that entire 30 some acres. It's a lot of jobs that you can make. This not only has the university research facilities, we'll have place there for businesses. It'll have a flow through sea water system. It's gonna have the world's largest wave tank. It'll make the Port of LA, in the researcher's mind, the world's place to study tsunamis and sea level rise. And what I like to say is put the scientists that study sea level rise right at sea level. So they... <laughs> One of the things that I want to point out to everybody, here's our fruit dock. The fruit dock is staying. That's an active warehouse. We built the marina around it. Everybody seems, doesn't have any issues with it. It moves fruit, it's kind of periodic. A lot of people work there. It's kind of neat to have a little vestige of the working waterfront there. We may put a new face on those warehouses, but I have to tell you, the universe is chomping at the bit to get over there. Cabrillo Beach restrooms. I know a couple people have asked me about this and I wanted to be frank with you. This is another project that we are not doing right now. They're the $5 million restrooms, $5 million for five restrooms. And the reason is because we need new sewer line out there. And so when we were trying to prioritize the money we had, we thought, mm, there's restrooms there already. Maybe they're not the most beautiful restrooms. You know, as long as they function, we set that aside. I know there's people that want those restrooms done. We made choices. Tonight's your opportunity to come up and say, I don't like that choice, you know, I think you should have done this. We want to hear about it. If, you know, it's like, if we get more money, we'll do things that we haven't been able to program as yet. Okay, over in the Wilmington side, the Beacons Building, original home of Smart and Final, is becoming the Railroad Museum. And up in the upper floors is going to be the Port's Historical Archives. We are moving this project forward. We thought maybe this might be a $5 million museum, but when we turned things over to our consultant and the uh, community to kind of look at the design, they tend to come back with something a little bit nicer. And so now it's a $20 million project. And so, unfortunately, we all like the $20 million one more than the $5 million one. And so I'm like, okay, we don't throw out the $20 million one and build the $5 million. We take a piece of the project and we just start moving it forward. And as we get money, we'll do it because it would be great to get to the ultimate point. But 
you know, there's a presentation that we could do, has been done for the community on what that is, and that is a fabulous project. First part of this is doing the structural stuff. Looking at that building, make sure it's structurally safe and doing whatever we need to do to um, retain the building. Avalon Triangle Park. I can remember when Ken Melendez came to the board meeting and, and said, we held the brown, groundbreaking for this park in 2004. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, I went back and I'm like, where is this project, you know? And so we're like, you know, trying to move the project. And what I understand now is we've gone through a remediation. We've spent, a, we've spent over a million dollars trying to clean up the soil. And what the staff tell me now is we still don't have sign off from the agencies and that we probably have to spend another two years and hundreds of thousands of dollars more to work on this site in order to get the soil clean enough so that we can use it as a park. So that is one that I know the Wilmington folks are anxious to see happen, um, but it's not happening. But there's a project very high priority for the Wilmington community, and that is what we call Avalon Boulevard South. That is getting a piece of the promenade, the waterfront promenade, right down there in Wilmington by Banning's Landing. And it's a high priority. And in order to make it work, we have to relocate Catalina Freight but we need to coordinate with the island company in order to make this work. And I have to tell you, I am passionate about making sure the agreements are in place to make sure Wilmington gets its piece of the waterfront under this mayor's term. So that's my goal. And once we do that, then this is um, just to orient Everybody, this is Wilmington South. Here's Banning's Landing right there. So this kind of opens up this whole area here for the community. And that project itself is an expensive project, 30 million. It's got promenade. We have to rebuild the seawall. We're gonna move Water Street. There'll be new parking lot. There'll be a development opportunity there. So that's what we're working on. Calendar of events, all right. Plan your year around what's going on the waterfront, because these are all the events. We're adding some new things this year. We're going to have movie nights. We're going to be doing more, you know, in the Wilmington Park. We'll have the arrival of the Iowa. They're going to have the commissioning ceremony on July 6. That's their plan. We want to see you all down here on Cars and Stripes and all of our other events. We are having Navy Days this year. It's August 15th to 19th. We're getting a destroyer on Navy Days. We can't tell you the name of the destroyer. It's top secret. So we don't even know, but it's a destroyer. So, but we'll have the Iowa here before that. So it'll feel like we have permanent Navy Days. So summer concert series tonight, if you haven't been out, movie nights. And then one of the other things that was part of our strategy for energizing the waterfront was going out and getting a entertainment company to bring on big events. We wanted to have Cirque du Soleil on the waterfront. We want some of these other things. And so we went out with an RFP. We, we selected Vox Entertainment. It's taken us a while to negotiate the contract, but it sounds like we're going to be able to do that. They do big events. We're looking at bringing them under contract, having them stage big events down here, not raves, you know, big family events. You know, maybe, we'll, you know, maybe, I don't know, rock and roll bands are good, whatever. But, you know, so that's coming up in our future. And so that's my overview of what's going on.